first night of Luminous Conference 2017. Why don't you just turn to the girl next to you and say, you're looking amazing tonight. So good. You do look amazing. We just want to welcome all of our guests here. If you've come from far away, we want to say you're so welcome. And we've got some senior leaders here. Give me a wave if you're a senior leader in your church and you've come here to be with us. Why don't we give them all a hand? Thank you. We've got Magda all the way from Poland. We've got Georgina here all the way from Bolton. We've got Vicky from just up the road, really. <laughs> so good to have you with us. Really, really love the fact that you're here. Well, I've got something on my heart that I want to share with you, and I know that we've already had so much. God has already started to move in our midst, but we decided that we were going to do things a little bit differently this year, that we were going to perhaps just bring it in, bring everybody in a little bit closer. And that's why we called it, There is a Place for You Here. There is a place for you here. You know, when I was thinking about this conference and about what I wanted to share and what I wanted, you know, I wanted something from God's own heart. And there was just one overwhelming cry, just one overwhelming thing that would, would just sort of rise up into, in my heart. And it's just this one statement that you are not alone. You are not alone. You are not alone. You aren't alone. No matter how much it feels like you are alone, no matter how overwhelming your circumstances might be, you are not alone. Our Father in heaven sent his son, and the angel said to Mary that he was going to be Emmanuel. God with us. God is with us. Even when we don't see him and even when we don't feel him, he is with us. He never leaves us. He never forsakes us. And not only that, but the Bible says that he is for us. That all of his resource is at our disposal. He is for each and every one of you. You are not alone. And not only that, but then he puts us into a family. His family. And within that family, there are boys, but there are also girls. And in Luminous 2017, we've got a wealth of women a wealth of women that are for you. Just as God is for you, that we are for you. And not only that, but we are with you. You are not alone. I know that often we can do life alone. And often we've done life up until this point alone. And it's felt like that. But it doesn't have to be like that. But you see, if I was the devil, if I was the enemy of your soul, if I was the enemy of all that God stood for and all the plans and purposes that God has for you, then what I would do is that I would pit women against each other. I would make them compete. I would make them compare. And when women are pitted against each other, 
that makes them mean. Anybody met, met a mean girl? Because we've all, we can see ourselves in those situations. I mean, everybody's had some mean girl say some mean thing to you. If I was the devil, I would make us compete. And I would pre present to us this impossible image of perfection. This impossible image of success. This impossible image of what it means to be a successful woman. And so we get bombarded, don't we? We get bombarded with these images and we get bombarded with the uh, pressure. I mean, now apparently, somebody told me, it's a really big thing, is um, that you've got to have a gap between your thighs. Like that's, that's the thing now. I just don't think that's humanly natural. Unless you, you know, you're working out 24-7 in the gym, you don't eat, you know, maybe, just maybe. But I just don't think there was supposed to be sunlight showing in those areas. <laughs> I would make us compete against one another and compare ourselves to one another. I mean, you've heard the conversations, haven't you? You know, somebody walks in and they're like, oh, have you seen Sarah? I know, she's just so skinny. I mean, that girl can eat and eat and eat and eat and eat, but she just doesn't gain weight. I know we hate her, right? <laughs> you know, or, you know, did you know Michelle? She's like got her house and it's all like really, really like a show home and then she bakes and then she's like, you know, she's got all these kids and the kids always look like, you know, they've just walked out of a catalogue and everybody's so happy and smiley. Yeah, we hate it, right? <laughs> we don't like her at all. That's because we've learned to compare ourselves to e each other. But in church in the body of Christ, in this family that God has given us. He has gifted each and every one of us to each other. I want you to turn to the girl next to you and say, you're God's gift to me. I want you to know, ladies, if I can speak not as your pastor, or a pastor right now, but as a sister in Christ. If I can speak as your sister in Christ, I want you to know something. I am not your competition. I'm your cheerleader. Sisters in Christ, that's what we are to each other. We're each other's cheerleaders. We celebrate each other. I celebrate you. I celebrate what God has done. I celebrate what God has said. I celebrate what God has gifted you with. I celebrate that because you have what I don't have, and together we make something special. Amen. Yes, that's worth a clap. I am not your competition, I'm your confirmation. I'm here to confirm everything that God has said over your life. I'm here to amen his love, to amen his goodness, to amen his faithfulness, to amen his promises, to amen his purposes and plans over your life. I am confirmation. I amen it. If God said it, then I am here for you to hear. Amen. So be it. Let it be. I'm not your competition. I'm your comforter. Because when there are no words to be said, when there are no words to express, I can hold you. I can cry with you. I can pray. When you're not strong, I can be strong. I am not your competition. I'm your sister. And God has gifted us to each other. You are not alone. You are not alone. 
I don't care how it feels. You are not alone. God has placed me and your sister next to you and on the other side to be here with you, to be here for you, to cheer you on, to confirm everything that God has said and to comfort you when you need it. I've coined a new hashtag. Yes, we've had YOLO. And we've had FOMO. Is that how you say it? But now we've got Yana. Hashtag Yana. You are not alone. I am so cool. I can, I can invent hashtags. Absolutely. My kids are somewhere dying. <laughs> but anyway, every time, maybe you need a reminder. Maybe you need a reminder some days when it feels like you're isolated and alone. You think you are not alone. You know, Jesus sees everything. Jesus sees you. Even when you don't know it, Jesus sees you. I don't know if you remember that there is um, a guy in the Bible. Jesus is asking his disciples to come follow him. He's just going to guys and saying, you know, come follow me, come follow me. And everybody's kind of like dropping their whole lives and following Jesus. He goes up to a man called Philip and he says, follow me. But Philip has a brother. And so Philip goes to his brother, Nathaniel, and he says, I found him. I have found him. I have found the one that Moses wrote about. I have found, you know, the, the one that the prophets are all talking about. Yep, it's Jesus of Nazareth. And Nathaniel says to Philip, can anything good come out of Nazareth? I'm trying to, I'm trying to imagine what that would be like in our day and age. That like your brother or your sister comes up to you and says, I found the Messiah, the one that we've been waiting for, the one who is going to save us. And it's Bob, the joiner. <laughs> you know, the one that lives behind the chippy? Yeah, that one. I can imagine Nathaniel going, what? Nazareth? Can anything good come out of Nazareth? <laughs> So Nathaniel goes to check Jesus out. And the Bible says, and I'm going to just, uh, so I don't get it wrong, let's go to the Word. Let's go to the Word. Oh, here we go. Come see, said Philip. This is verse 46 of John 1. And then when Jesus saw Nathaniel approaching, he said to him, he truly is an Israelite in whom there is no deceit. How do you know me? Nathanael asked. Jesus answered, I saw you while you were still under the fig tree before Philip called you. And then Nathanael replied, Rabbi, you are the son of God. You are the king of Israel. How do you know me? Because it's like Nathanael comes up to Jesus and Jesus says, now this guy, this guy is the real deal. This guy, there is no guile. This guy is the authentic man of Israel. He is the real deal. And Nathaniel's like, hey, I don't even know you. I've never met you. How do you know me? Jesus said, I saw you. And sometimes we don't think God sees. Sometimes we're in a situation and we're, it's like he is a million miles away, but he sees. He knows. He doesn't just see, he hears. He hears every cry. He hears everything that you say, but even before you say it, he hears. There's also in the same book of John, we've got when Jesus died, dies on the cross, he goes 
He's dead for three days and then he comes back to life by the power of God on the third day. And then he appears to his disciples. And then there's this disciple who wasn't there when Jesus appears, Thomas. And so the disciples go to Thomas and they're like, it's true. He is risen. He is alive. And Thomas, who's been living all these, year, these days after the, the crucifixion, with the disciples and they've been, they felt alone. They felt abandoned. They felt confused. They, did, they didn't understand what was happening to them. And now all the disciples says, yeah, we saw him. He's alive. And Thomas says, unless I put my hands, unless I see his hands, unless I see his side where he was pierced, he says, I will not believe. And then it says, a little while later, they're all in a locked room. And Jesus appears to Thomas. And Jesus says, here are my hands. Here is my side. And Thomas says, my Lord and my God. How did Jesus know? what Thomas had said. Nobody had told Jesus. Jesus, we don't know where he was. He, he was just appearing to different people. But how did he know that Thomas said, I will not believe unless I see his hands, until I see his side and his feet? Because Jesus hears. He hears everything that you say and the things that you don't say. The Bible says in Psalm 139, he says, Oh Lord, you search me and you know me. Not only does he see, he hears and he knows. He knows the stuff that you think nobody knows. He knows the things that you haven't spoken to any other soul. He knows. He knows it all. You are not alone. You are not alone. Not only that, but then he comes alongside. So when Jesus goes back to the Father, the Father sends the Holy Spirit. The Bible calls the Holy Spirit parakletos, which means someone who comes alongside, somebody who is an advocate, somebody who comes and he's a counselor. And he comes and he, he's our comforter. He's our teacher. He's our guide. He is our strength. He empowers us. He helps us to see what God sees. He gives us faith. Not only does God see, not only does he hear, not only does he know, but he also comes alongside. There are women in this place and you need the Holy Spirit. You need to know that he is here. You need to know that he is with you. You need to know that you are not alone. That you have a God who is in the midst of your situation. That he understands. Even when you don't even understand, he understands. Even when you don't have the words, he understands. Even when you don't know what is happening, he understands. He understands that you lost it. He understands that you're not in control. He understands that you don't know what you're doing. He understands. He comes alongside. And tonight, before we go any further, I want us to have a time when God can come and meet with you at your point of need. Whatever is going on in your life, God wants to come alongside. And he wants to tell you, you're not alone. You're not alone. Can I have the band come up? I want you to take this window. I want you to take this moment and I want you to say, God, I need you. 
I need you to come and speak to my heart. I need you to come. But I want you to know that it's not just the Holy Spirit who comes alongside. Your sister who is here, the women in this room, we come alongside. We come to confirm everything that the Holy Spirit does. We come to comfort. We come to guide. We come to teach. We come to bring peace. We come to hold. We come alongside. There is a a beautiful psalm. It's one of my favorite psalms, and it's Psalm 40. And it says, I waited patiently for the Lord. He turned to me and he heard my cry. I waited patiently for the Lord. He turned to me and he heard my cry. He lifted me up out of the mud and the mire and set my feet on a rock and gave me a firm place to stand. There is an important part to play for somebody who cries out. You see, God is here to meet with us, but I truly believe that even though he sees, he hears, he knows, he comes alongside, it is a powerful thing to cry out. It is a powerful thing to acknowledge that we need God. It's a powerful thing to to acknowledge where our help comes from, to cry out. It's not about volume. It's about need. The blind man, he cried out to the Lord, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. And even though the crowd tried to quiet him down, he cried out all the more, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. And Jesus said, come. Jesus saw, heard, knew that it's a powerful thing to cry out. But I also acknowledge in this place that there are women here who cannot cry out. Maybe because you're in that state where there are no words. You haven't got the words. Maybe you don't have the strength. But there's also people in the Bible, the deaf man, the lame man, the paralyzed man, where the Bible says that his friends brought them to Jesus. You've got friends in this place who have maybe brought you to this, to Luminous 2017. Maybe there's a friend who's going to cry out on your behalf. I don't know. But I do know that Jesus is here to meet us. So what I would love you to do, ladies, is I would love you to stand. We're going to worship for a little bit of time. And the word for us tonight is that you are not alone. Jesus is here by His Spirit. He's come to comfort. He's come to heal. He's come to strengthen. He's come to give wisdom. He's come to guide. He's come to empower. Whatever you need, you start to cry out. You start to talk to God. You start to use your voice. And even if you can't use your voice, we're going to use our voice on your behalf. We're going to invite the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, come. Holy Spirit, come. Thank you, Jesus. We bless you, Lord God. And for those ladies here, I want you to to know that this is a safe place. We are all together in the same boat. We all need Jesus. (laughs) We all need Jesus. But I want to pray for the women in this place that you feel different, where you feel like you don't fit in, where you feel like nobody gets you, you're odd, you feel like when you open your mouth, people are like, yeah, great, like who brought her, 
You know that feeling where you just think, I don't fit in this place. I don't fit in with my family. I don't fit at, in my workplace or at school or I don't even fit in this church. I want to pray for you. In fact, this is for you. You are not alone. I want you to be brave and I want you to just surrender. Just lift your hands to heaven because God sees, God hears, God knows and he's right here and he's brought all of us to tell you, you are not alone. Holy Spirit, I pray for every woman in this place who feels different, who feels like that they don't fit in, who, who struggles with feeling like they belong anywhere. Holy Spirit, I pray that you would come and make your presence so tangible in this place. Lord, that they would know that not only do you know, but that you have made them, you have designed them, that they are perfect, that they are just right, that they are more than enough, and that they are needed in this place. We give you praise. We give you honour. We give you glory. Holy Spirit, come and speak truth to every heart and mind. We give you praise, oh God, and we give you thanks. God has gifted us to each other, ladies. And this weekend is all about that. We're going to be coming into God's presence, but we're also going to be holding hands with the woman on our right and with the woman on our left because we are here for each other. Are you ready for that? Awesome.